I'm Tina from Victoria Designs. Our channel just reached 50,000 subscribers, so that deserves a celebration and a treat. In this tutorial, I will show you from A to Z how to create this cute little specimen album. Now, what's the treat? Well, all the printables you need to make this cute little project you get for free if you opt in via the link in the description. And then you will receive an email with the download link for all the sheets. You can make this yourself right now. Well, if you have your tools nearby, that is. Not when you're riding a bicycle. Never craft when you're riding a bicycle, promise. This little album has sleeves for pages and each sleeve holds a slide. Like this. So cute! And there are two kinds of slides. So a regular one, like this one, and also a see-through one, like this one. Look! You can choose which one you like best and I will explain everything in the tutorial. This mini project is not as easy as our other mini projects, but it's definitely not hard to make. It's difficulty-wise like a little step up from our other mini projects. So if you got those down, this one is perfect for you to improve your crafting skills. Does this mean this project is only for beginners? No, this is pure fun for everyone. The designs of this project are based on the principles of our Gentleman Cats Junk Journal Kit. If you like to check that one out, there's a link for that below. If you want to make this project, but you'd rather like to use your own scrapbook paper instead, I also made a template version. It is available in our Etsy shop. Just click on the link to find it. And now let's craft. Let me walk you through the sheets that you will get and on which paper to print them. So the most of them I printed on 160 grams paper. That's just the weight that I usually use. Most printers can still handle it and it's still nice and kind of sturdy to work with. So page one has two of the sleeves and two of the tabs and it says print this page four times, which I did because I need eight sleeves, eight page sleeves in total and we need eight tabs. Now page two is actually the binding, the accordion. Do you have to print it? No, but I gave it anyway that you have the option if you like to. You can just print it on white paper. I added extra faux inking to make it uh, stand out less. What you can also do is, and I will probably use this one, print it on colored paper. This is um, craft cardstock paper. So uh, there's that option. The third option is that you just use paper of your own and just uh, make a rectangle that is uh, that size and uh, score every half an inch. It's not that hard. You can just uh, make your own as well. So different options there. And then page three and page four is something that you need to choose. So there are two ways of working with these slides. The first way is if you just print the pictures that go in here on regular paper, then I advise to print page three twice. If you would like to print on transparent paper, I will show you that in a minute, then I advise you to print page four twice. Or you can just make a mix, one of these and one of these. That's totally up to you. So these are going to be the slides that go in the sleeves. And then here are the pictures that go in these slides. And these are the ones if you use these slides. But you can also, if you like that, print on transparent paper. Let me show you. Now, this is not what your page is going to look like. It's going to look like more like this. But uh, I already printed these on transparent paper and I didn't want to waste it. That's, that's why I'm going to use this one. So it's going to almost look the same like this. So when I get the backing off, you see, it is just like a photo negative. It is completely see-through with the little kitties. Very pretty. So the idea is to use these, if you like that, to, with these because it's going to be completely see-through. Now, if you've never heard of these, these you can just feed into an inkjet printer. It has a very rough side. It, it feels like, like acetate paper, but this has a very rough side on one side and a smooth side on the other. You print on the rough side comes out gorgeous. It's called inkjet film transparent transparent inkjet sheets. You can find them everywhere. These are, I kid you not, more than 20 years old because I bought them as a student to print things on to use on an overhead projector. Yes, 
I am that old. When I was in college, we still used overhead projectors. We had matrix printers. Yes, the ones with the incredibly loud noise. You couldn't print at night because it would wake up the whole street. So, but you can still find these everywhere on the internet, I see, which is amazing. So if you're up for it, you can definitely try it with these. In the tutorial, you will see what the result is. And then the last page is back on regular paper. It is just the two outer covers and the two inner covers. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut everything out. And if you would like to follow along with the tutorial, first decide whether you'd like to use this method for your slides or this method or a mix like I am doing. So I will be back shortly with everything cut out. Let me show you first how to create this sleeve page. So I have here one cut out and the first thing I'm going to do is add some extra ink. Again, it is optional for sure, but it's going to make it just that tad bit nicer. It's going to hide the white edge here. So I'm only going to do these three sides and this side because the tabs are disappearing anyway. Now what I'm also going to do is turn it around and I'm going to ink a little bit on the back side here because when you open the sleeves you will see this white and that might take away from the illusion. That's why I like to just ink the edge on the inside of that sleeve here. The rest is not possible. So just here the edges, that's it. Again, totally optional. I have included in the files a full sheet back design. You can print that on the back instead for sure, but I don't think it's really needed. So I'm gonna leave it like it is and just solve it this way. And then when it's inked, it's time to score these lines. I'm going to use a scored board because it's fast and easy, but you can definitely use something like an empty pen and a ruler and like a placemat underneath and just line up your ruler with the line and go over there to create the score lines. And now I'm going to fold everything so these can be fold backwards. You can use a bone folder if you like to make the folds extra crisp. And now the center fold of these three, I'm gonna fold inward. And the other two, I'm gonna fold outward like this. And this piece will be where the sleeve is attached to the binding. It's gonna look like this. And to attach everything to each other, I'm going to use double-sided tape. You can definitely just use glue instead. I'm using 3 8 of an inch double-sided tape. Smaller works as well. And I'm gonna put tape on the outside of the tab here, on the printed side. And on the, on the other one as well. Like this. And I'm also going to put tape on one of these half inch pieces here. I'm going to put it as close as I can to the top fold. You see, my tape is not wide enough to completely fill that piece, but that's okay. As long as your tape gets right next to the fold, not on the fold, but right next to it. Otherwise, if you put something in the sleeve, it might catch. So you can still put some glue afterwards in the empty spot if you like. like this. And then I am going to glue these half inch pieces next to each other. Against each other, I mean, like this. And now we have something to attach to the binding. Then I am going to take off the backing of these side pieces. And I'm going to close this sleeve. Now make sure your score lines are straight because if not, it's going to be completely wonky. It's well worth the effort to make sure your scoring lines are straight. I'm quickly going to add some extra ink on the top here. Now that it's closed, there we go. And now when you look into the 
pocket because I added some ink on the other side, you don't immediately see all the white that's back here. So it keeps having that vintage vibe. So, and I already went ahead and made seven more of these. And when all your sleeves are ready, it is time to work on the slides. First, I'm going to start with showing you how to make the slides with only one window. So I cut out the frame almost completely, not entirely. And I also have already one of the pictures print on regular paper. You see, I didn't cut these little corners yet, but I like to do that later. The first thing I'm going to do now is cut out this window. And you can definitely do that with regular scissors, but I think it's a tiny bit easier to do that with a craft knife. Now, this is a very heavy duty one, but this is sharper than my regular craft knives. So if you have that, I think it's worth it to use that. Otherwise, you can just use your scissors. There. And I'm already going to in the inside of this window again to hide the white edges. I mean, they're not really edges, it's more like the side of the paper. Because it's thicker paper, you will actually see it and this will hide it a little bit. And the next thing to do is I'm going to score this middle line. Yeah. And now I can fold it in half. Again, score it very, very straight so that all the edges will line up. I'm gonna make this fold extra crisp. So, and now, only now, when you're sure that everything lines up perfectly, you can use your scissors to round the corners. And when you do it, when it's folded, the two corners will be the same shape. But if you have one, I'm going to use a corner punch. I have a corner punch that has a four millimeter corner, which is a very small one, which is actually gonna fit with this one. And I'm just going to use these here. It's a little bit quicker, but it's definitely not needed to have this. Okay, again, I'm gonna ink the corners that I cut off here a little bit. Okay, and now I'm going to take my cat picture here and I'm gonna figure out where I want it. I think about here. I'm gonna keep it in place. I'm just going to use a pencil to roughly mark where it should be. I know it's going to be in the center. I'm going to use some glue to put it in place. You can use double-sided tape, you can use other glues. There you go. And I'm going to simply glue this in place right here. There. And I also want to add a little tab on the side, again optional. I already cut it out except for these little triangles here. I want to do that when it's folded in half so that it completely lines up. So the first thing I'm going to do is score the center line again. Then I'm going to fold it in half. And then when it's fold in half, I am going to cut off these little corners here. There. Add a little bit of extra inking. First thing I'm going to do is so adding glue so I can close it there. When you use this, met this method, you can actually glue it behind the picture if you like, but it's definitely not necessary. So I want to put it here, lined up with the top of that window and make sure it doesn't peek out. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna glue it right here. You can add um, tape instead of glue, of course. There. A bit too much glue here. Okay. So I want it right here. Yeah, I think that's good. And then if you like, you can just put glue all around this frame over the whole half here and close it. Now, I would like a little bit of an illusion that is a glass slide in here. So you can add a bit of plastic on top here. And there are several things that you can do. What I usually use is these leftover sheet protectors. I still have hundreds lying around. I don't want to just 
tossed them away because it's still very useful. What you can also use is this packaging plastic. I mean, everything these days is packaged. This is from, I don't know, something from crafts and I keep them. But what I'm going to use is leftover pieces from older transparent sheets projects. It's nice and sturdy and it works perfectly. So this is the material that I showed you earlier that I printed the see-through cats on. So I cut out a square that's a tiny bit bigger than the window. It doesn't come all the way up to the edges. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add double-sided tape. I do not know how well this works with regular glue, with tacky glue or something. I have to say, if anyone knows, please let me know. So I'm going to use double-sided tape right next to the window on the inside. And I'm using a quarter inch size. You can also, if you have bigger, just cut it in half. Okay, it's a hassle, but it's still possible. So, all the way around. You know what? I'm actually going to add a little bit of ink on the inside here as well. Because sometimes when you put a lot of things in between, it bulks up and you still see a little bit of white. Tina, aren't you overreacting? Probably. Okay, I completely am bending this thing all around. Let's just move on. So I have my uh, transparent sheet Ooh, thingy here. And I'm going to put the rough side on the inside, so it's smooth on the outside. I'm simply going to line this up. It's okay if some tape sticks out, because we're going to close it now anyway. So, because this is plastic, I am going to put some tape on top as well. Because I don't think my glue stick would hold plastic as well. This certainly does, and probably I like tacky glue, some stronger white glue will too, but I'm not sure. I'm not being adventurous today, dear crafters, sorry about that. Okay, so I have my tape on top of the plastic. I'm going to remove the backing, and then I just need to add glue on the remaining uh, pieces of this half and I can just close it there. Don't have to put any glue on the other side, just this side will do. And now I can carefully close it. And I have one very sturdy, very pretty slight thingy. I'm extremely happy with this. And when I take one of these sleeve pages, this just slides in here so well. Yeah, you can put it a bit higher so that it's really centered in this um, oval cutout, but it's definitely not necessary. Look how pretty this is. So this is how you make a slide with one window. And now let me show you how to make one with two windows and the cat's print on transparent sheets. So I cut it almost out, I left the corner for now, and I'm also now going to first cut out these two windows. Some of the steps will be exactly the same as with the previous slide, some steps will be a bit different. I'm going to score it in half now. Yeah, I'm doing it now before inking. It doesn't matter if you do it before or after. Then just fold in half. Yes. You can say, why didn't you just fold it in half first and then cut out the windows? You can definitely do that. I find it a little bit more tricky, but that's a personal choice. You can definitely first score it, fold in half, and uh, cut out both windows at the same time then. Plus, what I'm going to do extra is ink the insides of these windows as well. So if they don't perfectly line up, 
you won't see any white. So I inked the window edges already. No white there. And then I am going to again cut these corners. I'm going to ink the corners, the sides, a little bit on the inside as well. Again, you can print this with the full sheet back on the other side if you don't want to do this inking. There, that looks like a mess, but we're not ready yet. The end result will be pretty. This time I have one of the see-through Kitty Caddies print on transparent sheets. I'm gonna line up where I want it. I'm going to draw where I want it. But I think first I want to add my tab. I already cut it out, fold in half, inked, etc. I'm going to put some glue uh, here. Yeah, of course, if your tab seems to be a bit too wide, you can just cut off a little bit from this side. So I'm going to just glue one part next to the window. I'm going to line up the top with this. You can put it higher if you like. And then I'm going to add some double-sided tape around this window. Well, you know, you can put a tab on top of the picture later as well. It's just, it's just how I like to do it. And I am actually going to put my tape all the way up here, now that I'm doing it anyway, around both windows. As well there yeah I need some tape here anyway so while I was at it I could already add it now I am going to remove this tape I'm already going to remove, yeah, I have to remove this tape. Now, be careful because, yeah, I, it already started. When I was trying this before, I got stuck on everything. And I nearly ruined some of these. So, don't get stuck. So, okay, I'm going to line up this kitty catty. with my stripes here, there. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is add glue all over this tab thingy here. And I'm going to close it. There. There is already tape here, here, here and here, so I don't have to put any extra on top here. I'm going to remove these side backings as well. And now I'm going to put glue on all the remaining parts on this side again. And now it is time to close it. And suddenly a mess becomes beautiful. Look at that. How pretty is that? Yes, I have to say it feels less sturdy than the one with the um, full back here. But because this is a transparent sheet, it's still pretty sturdy. If you like, you can maybe even add a little, an extra layer of transparent sheet on top. 
I don't know, I've never tried it. I don't feel like it's needed. And again, this will also fit beautifully inside these pockets. And there, I showed you how to make both of the slides. You can make the ones that you like, how many that you like, or mix them up. And the next thing I'm going to do is prepare the binding because it's time to bind all these together. So I cut out this accordion piece. Yes, I, I took the one that's printed on color paper because I think then afterwards I need less extra ink to hide all the white. But as I said in the beginning, you can also just take over the measurements very easy. That size, that size on colored paper, cut it out and just, well, I'm going to score every half inch, so that's very easy. So I'm just going to now fold this. It's very important that your scoring lines are super straight and that you're folding super straight. Otherwise you're gonna have a wonky booklet so just accordion-wise fold this whole strip. There, this can be pretty crisp. Like this. How does this binding work? Well, the idea is that these sheets come between all of these little folds. And there's exactly room for all eight of these pockets. Now, how do we bind it? Simply with a piece of string. But before that, we need to punch all these holes. Now, I'm going to punch a few at the same time so that they're lined up very well. You can do that with an awl, but I prefer to use a punch for this. I have a handheld eighth of an inch punch here, but since I have it, I'm going to use my cropper dial. Uh, it also punches eighth of an inch and three sixteenth inch holes. So I put it at eighth of an inch so I can already punch a few holes at the same time. There. As I said, you don't need this tool because it's not a cheap one, but it's a handy one. And there are many other tools, it's just I have it and I can be a bit quicker. Oh yeah, I still have to do this one as well. There. So I'm just folding a few of these at the same time. You know what? I probably can get away with all of them. Yep. There. So we have our holes in the binding now, and now the idea is to also have holes here in this part of the sleeves. But since these are going to be put inside this binding. The holes are not going to be exactly in the center here anymore. So that's why I didn't put any hole marks on here. It really depends on how thick your paper is, etc. You're going to mark your holes yourself. Yes, you can. So how to put these pages in here? Make sure that you flip your um, binding here, your binding accordion, so that the sides are going down. And then your first sleeve is going to be put like this with the uh, oval part on top into the first valley you see. See? It's not like this. Make sure the sides are not facing upward, but the sides are facing downward. So tuck it in there and make sure top and bottom are aligned. And then your second sleeve is going to be put into the next valley. So there's every time there's going to be a little bit, a little fold in between. And the next sleeve is going to be in the third valley. Can you see it? And then the next in the fourth valley. So you're putting your sleeves all in each one in a valley. And there's just room for eight. And then at the end you have another piece left. Now, 
When you're done, really make sure you line all these up. And now you're going to mark where the holes are and to make sure that these stay in the right order, I'm going to get out my first sleeve that already has the markings and put them down. Then keep everything in place and make the markings for the next sleeve. Get it out, keep everything tight with your fingers, put it on top so you keep the order the same. Make markings for the third one and so on. This fourth one. Yes. Okay. Now I am going to one by one cut out the holes where I made my marks. So this was the last one, putting it back here so I have my order again. So there, and now they're still in the right order, I am going to get them into place again. Just quickly put all of these sleeves into their right slots in their right valley. There, and then line things up very well. I'm going to keep them in place with a clip because I need my hands to show you something first. I have here a piece of embroidery thread. It could be something else, uh, ropey, thready. Um, it's about 14 inches and it's probably too long. I also have a needle right here. There you go. You won't see this. This is a binding that you will hide, but it's an extra layer of protection to keep everything bound in the right place. Plus it's easier later to add the cover pieces on. So I'm just going from front to back through all my holes and on the back, back to the front. That's it. Oh no, that's not it because I still need to bind it. It's actually handy to have this clip here. I normally don't do that. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna get the clip off because now it's time to get those, yeah, you know, those knots that you need an extra finger for. Huh? Keep it as tight as possible. Yes, oh, that's my best one yet. Well, I'm gonna add an extra knot here. Yeah, it's way too long, so you definitely don't need a piece of thread that's that long. So I'm going to cut off until it's like half an inch tails. And now these tails I'm actually going to tape to this front so it doesn't stick out later. I have here just some standard tape here. Hope it's not too wide. I'm going to cut off a little bit. There. Doesn't have to be pretty, could be washi tape. Just using this tape to just keep those tails where they are. You know, that's that's the only way that's the only reason I'm putting tape here. So that these tails won't stick out later. And now for the covers. Normally in a mini project I make sure that everything can be made with the pieces from the printed paper. But in this case, if I would make the cover out of just printed paper, even if we layer a few layers on top of each other, it would still be too flimsy. So for this time, we will need a few pieces of chipboard. They're not wash pieces, these all come from offcuts. If you don't have any chipboard, no worries, you can just use some light packaging here. Of course, this is too light, but I would just glue some layers on top of each other, like two or three layers, then cut out the pieces and it will be gorgeous. No one will see this because we're going to wrap these up completely. So glue some layers of this on top of each other and it will work 
equally as good. Now, what I do provide is designs to wrap these covers. So we have two big pieces that will wrap on the outside and two inner covers. Now you might say, hmm, these are not centered. Why is that? Well, you will see. It's done like that by design. Okay, let's start with the outer cover here. With the front the front and the back are going to be a little bit different and i'm going to use one big one and one small one by the way the size of the big one is what was it two and three quarters by four and an eight and this is also four and an eight by half an inch and of course the front and the back are the same and first i'm going to start wrapping the front cover with this beautiful cat in front now, make sure it's the right way up and then flip it this side. So it's still the right way up, it's just we see the back. And now this big piece will come here and this small piece will come here and we'll have a little gap here. Now, I would like to have an eighth of an inch all around. These days I really trust my eyeballs, but measure if you must that all the sides are uh, half an inch around. There, I'm gonna make some markings. Okay, I'm going to add some double-sided tape on the edges. That's not necessary, it's just something that I'm used to. And it makes me very sure that the edges are really down, that there are not going to be any air bubbles in between. But you can definitely just use some strong white glue, tacky glue or anything. I'm going to use it as well, but only in the middle. There. You know what? I'm going to place it back to see. And I'm going to place this already in place. And I want like an eighth of an inch gap in between. Make sure that this is completely straight and aligned. I'm going to make a marking here as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mark in between. And I'm going to add an extra layer of double-sided tape there. It's just, I want an extra layer of protection here. Because this piece is going to have to fold all the time. Like open, close, open, close. And this will protect the paper a bit from tearing. What you can also do is just already put these two eight to an inch apart and glue them together with some washi tape that's going to come underneath some washi tape that's not going to shine through this this paper that is okay now i'm going to remove this look you don't have to do that but i think it's better to do that to add something just that the paper is a little bit more protected from tearing and now i'm going to take my tacky glue or in the center okay now if I glue this down as it is right now the tape will stick immediately so it has to be put in the right space so what you can use to have a little bit of wiggle room is to add some glue stick on top of the tape so you can temporarily still move it a bit it's just a bit of a safety here as well it's not it's not necessary but it's just when it's down it's down if you don't trust it just use only glue i would say okay and then let's put this in place right there beautiful okay for this one i am going to use only glue because not only that i'm able to wiggle it around a little bit more but also, I'm going to put some holes in here later because this is where the whole binding will be attached to. And glue dries, tape keeps being sticky. And I don't want to make my tool sticky. So I think this is better for my tools. Okay, now I have to be careful to line this up and have an eighth of an inch gap. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to let it dry first. Okay, this is not moving anymore. So now I'm going to fold this paper right against the edge. Carefully still. There. 
I'm going to open it up again and now I'm going to use my scissors to cut out the corners. If I would cut out my corners straight, the paper would bulk up a bit more. If I would cut my corners way too angled like this, we would have a naked corner here. We don't want that. Just So just don't cut straight, but angle a tiny little bit, like a bit. Here, and I'm going to cut to right next to that corner so it would be covered as well. And then I'm going to angle like this and cut. And I'm going to do that on all corners. This angle cuts, this angle cuts, like this angle cuts. And now when I cover the corner, it will be completely covered up without bulking up. Okay, so for that I am first going to attach some extra double-sided tape here again as a bit of a reinforcement. There, I'm gonna push it in the gap in a minute. And then now I'm also going to put some double-sided tape inside the tabs here. It's okay if the top of the tabs is not completely covered. Just make sure it's completely covered against the cardboard, the chipboard, I mean. So when you close it, you don't have any air gaps. But you can definitely do this with regular glue as well. So... This on all four tabs. Okay, I'm going to push this double sided tape in the gap here. And then I can remove the top layer. Oopsie. Okay, so now it's pushed into that gap. And now I'm just simply going to remove the tape from tab by tab and push it so it's really close against the edge. I'm just going to over. Oh, I forgot something. I should have cut this first. So I'm going to show it with the other side. So it's best to cut here, right to where the chipboard starts. And I didn't do it here, but I'm simply going to carefully cut that top layer through with my craft knife. Yeah, that's good. I don't want to come through the other side. So. And then here as well. Just glue it like this. And the sides. Yeah, like this. And when you use only glue, you need a little bit of time to let this dry. And now I'm going to take my inner covers and the one I'm going to use for the front is going to be this one. Because this piece is going to be hidden Anyway, that's why I put everything to the side. So I'm going to use this one. So with the empty piece on the half inch piece here. It just needs to be glued in here and a little bit can be pushed into that gap. This time I'm simply going to use some glue stick. Again, you can use double sided tape. You can use wet glue. Okay, and now I'm going to Put this in the center, like this. You see there's a bit of room left on the other side, but you're not going to see that anyway. So that's good. And then I can just push this in. And I'm gonna make sure this can move on the other side as well. Here, now this can move, see? Great. So this is what the inside cover will look like. This is what the front cover will look like. And then for the back cover, we're going to do the same, but the other way around. So let me explain. Okay, make sure that the pattern in the back is the same here so that you don't put it upside down by mistake. So it's the same. And now I'm going to flip it over like this again. But this time I'm going to put the big side here and the small part here. Mark it. 
then this one will come about here mark it as well like the first one I'm first going to put some extra tape over where these two almost meet optional but just more sturdy I am going to remove my double-sided tape here and add some glue remove that backing and put this one into place like this and put into place as well make sure everything is lined up and let dry for a bit so that the small part doesn't move anymore okay and when that's ready just the same going to fold the paper again to, against the edges of the um, chipboard. I'm gonna cut my corners. Put some extra double sided tape on top of this gap here. Sure it gets inside the gap you can also use washi tape as i said okay i'm gonna put some double-sided tape on all the tabs on the inside against the chipboard this time don't forget i'm going to cut this in like this then i'm going to remove this backing and the top backings and glue them in place yeah you can push something that's thin but not sharp very important in between in the gaps here same with the bottom there, always make sure you're really pushing the paper against the chipboard. There, and now only the side. Now I'm going to add this one on top. This time the cat is on that side. Just going to add some glue. Okay, I already inked it and I'm, I'm going to put this in place. This is not straight, now it is. There you go. Again, I'm gonna go make sure this is in that gap. The other side as well, where's my gap? There it is. There, look how pretty. There you go, well, almost ready. Front cover, this is gonna come in between. And then the back cover. And to attach all this together, I'm also gonna have to make some holes here, 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 and here. I'm gonna mark the holes on the inside. Now, this is a tiny little bit higher than this, like an eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna eyeball that that's in the center. And then I'm going to see where my holes need to be. Okay, and this time I want them to be in the center. I'm going to measure from that edge to the edge of that little piece of chipboard. I'm going to use my cropper dial again. With minimal effort, this is going to slide through the chipboard and the paper like a hot knife through butter. If you want it pretty, actually, it would be prettier to go outside in, but I'm going to add some eyelets anyway, so... Okay, great. And I'm going to use this template for the back. And here. And here. 
you see, it would have been a better idea to do it outside in. I thought this one was not going to leave a mark or any weird edges, but apparently it does. If you don't have a hole punch or anything, you can just use an awl. Now you don't have to, but I'm going to add some eyelets here. These are very small ones, like for an eighth of an inch um, hole. So if you have an eyelet setting tool, you can definitely add that for extra pizzazz. Just going to pop these in. Okay, all four eyelets have been set. And now it's time to completely assemble our little album. Okay, before you bind, make sure that the top oval here is on the top. As I said before, you won't see this thread anymore, but we're going to do the final binding with some better cord. I actually have some wax thread here. You can also use another type of thread that's sturdy and pretty. So I'm gonna go front to back through the front cover, front to back through the whole stack, front to back through the back cover, and now I'm gonna go back the other way through the other hole. So easy. So through this whole stack and then through the front cover. Yes, and I know my thread is pretty long, but I want to add a bow. Yeah, it's way too long. Okay. So make sure it's tight. You don't have any loops that shouldn't be there. And then I'm going to make a double knot. Like previously with the uh, inner pages, you need your, your extra finger here. Yep, 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 not bad. Yeah, and now you can leave it like it is and just snip off the ends or you can hang, hang beads on the ends or something. There are multiple possibilities. I like to make a little bow. It's just preference. Yeah, I like the wings of the bow not to be too big in this case. There. And I'm actually going to make a double knot in these. Is that is it wings? In these two. Yeah, I don't know what you call them. This just to make sure it's gonna be really tight. And then I'm going to cut off the excess thread. Yeah. Depending on what you want to do, uh, your thread needs a certain length. You can check for yourself. Okay, and now it's almost ready because I still need to fill these beautiful pages with our slides. Here are all my slides. Some have a backing, some are completely see-through. Um, I have too many because I needed to make some prototypes first to see if everything worked out. But now I can just slide these in here. Now look at that, it is completely ready. A mini album, yes, yeah, very tiny. And the pages are all sleeves that hold slides. How pretty is that? There. Look, how cute. And you can make it yourself. Now again, if you would like all the printables for this project for free, just opt in via the link below and an email with the download links will be sent to you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have some crafty friends that you think mm, they might like this as well, please share the video link with them. And I wish you a very, very crafty and beautiful day. Bye bye.